Good morning and welcome to a remarkably sunny December morning here in Henley-on-Thames. We are just outside of London with the all-new G-Wagon. Now we're going to jump in here and drive to somewhere very special and on the way I'll talk you through a little bit of the new features of this remarkable vehicle. I was never a big fan of the original G, majoritively because it was somewhat agricultural, but this they've elevated to the next level. So rather than me talking about it on the outside, let's hop on the inside, take you to our special location and talk about this remarkable machine. Welcome to the inside of the all-new Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon. Now, this is no ordinary G-Wagon. This is the G63 AMG, no less. Um, now, as I mentioned before we hopped in, I was never a massive fan of the G-Wagon. Not for the way it looks or anything like that, predominantly from the way it drives. But I have always respected and appreciated why it's become this sort of cultural icon of a car. It seems that people really love these things. And I appreciated it for their sort of tank-like geometry, but I was never enamored with the way they drove. They were, dare I say it, agricultural at best. The reason for that is that this platform has been around since the 1970s, and as a spot of context as to why this car is so important to Mercedes, is that it's the only car in their model lineup that they have no discontinuation date. So G-Wagon lovers, you're in luck, because the G-Wagon is staying around for a very long time. Now, what's great about this car is a lot has changed but importantly a lot hasn't and why I say that's important is because the car has become such an icon in its own right that to change this car and make it an entirely new G wagon would be wrong in my opinion even down to details on the exterior like keeping the door hinges on the outside of the car and that's something that has been taken from the design of the G since day one now it has had quite a substantial facelift I call it a facelift rather than a design change because ultimately it still looks extremely identifiable as the iconic G-Wagon. But it has sort of, you know, pulled its cheeks back and made the front less sort of pointy and it's chunkier. It's actually taller, wider and longer. It's 53 millimeters longer, 64 millimeters wider and interestingly 15 millimeters taller. And as a result, the change on the interior is huge. You just have this uh, just apparent more legroom, more space, more uh, head height. And that's what I want to talk about, the interior. That's where the biggest changes are by far. You get in this and it's like someone has taken an S-Class and just reformed it in the shape of a G-Wagon. What they've done is remarkable. The, the jump in quality and the disparity between this generation G-Wagon and the previous one is night and day. It's a completely different feeling. I mean, take for example the new infotainment screens. We've got not one, but two 12.3 inch screens in front of us. It's like IMAX in the dashboard. It's unbelievable. However, what hasn't been lost is its undertones of maniacal engine and exhaust note. Now, what I love is that they've now integrated the dynamic drive select switch down here. So I can go from comfort, which I'm currently in, to Sport Plus, and everything comes alive. <laughs> Listen to it. Good Lord. And it pulls like a mule with an adrenaline shot up its backside. It's just thick waft of torque. It's so cool. And once again, disguising its weight. It's a, this is a big, vehicle. What I didn't realize was last night I actually parked it alongside a Range Rover autobiography and this thing actually, its roof line towered over it. However, what I can't quite work out is despite the fact that this thing has colossally fat tires and suspension travel suitable for the Dakar rally, the ride quality is annoyingly stiff. I mean, I've taken it out of sport mode now and put it into comfort and still it's the, I don't know, the like damping feels a bit sharp somehow. I mean, I'm not on a bumpy road but it seems to be finding bumps it's, it's, it's really odd uh, so that's one thing that still if you like the 
caricature of the agricultural feel of the original G, they haven't entirely ironed it all out. So speaking of the engine, well in fact, let's talk about the price just quickly to uh, provide a little bit of context to the engine. So this particular spec, the spec that I am testing right now, is just over £152,000, sir. So not only has the car evolved somewhat, so has the price. But what you do get in the AMG version is Mercedes' famous 4-litre twin-turbocharged AMG V8. And as my cameraman just quoted, it has enough torque to pull your house down. At 850 newton meters, no less. That is ridiculous. I mean, you're gonna need some tarmac support crew behind you to relay the road as you're twisting it up with your tires. It's bonkers torque. Interestingly, it gives you a reading in real time on the dash of how much torque you're using in order to propel this car down the road. Now, speaking of propulsion, it is assisted with 585 brake horsepower. Like, these guys have evolved this platform to no end, and it has truly transformed the way this thing feels. Now, this is Mercedes-Benz press car. They've lent it to me for a few days, and I've been living with it. And I have to say, as much as I didn't really imagine myself living with the previous gen, this car I could actually spend some time with. I really enjoy it. There's something about it. Actually, the first time that I stepped out of it and turned around and locked the doors, I actually smiled. I had a smile on my face because it's such a cool tank. Anyway, um, we are now on our way to Bremont. Uh, they are a watch company whose stories of both the founding of the brand and the watches they produce often pull me by the heartstrings. We're on our way to their HQ now to look at their latest creation, which literally has a piece of Concorde inside of it. Let's check it out. thing about the Jeep, getting in and out is somewhat of a sense of occasion. We are now in the home of Bremont, which is a beautiful little place just outside of Henley. There's something about being in a traditional British village at Christmas time that makes your heart warm and festive. Anyway, let's go inside and check out some wonderful watches. projects. Uh -huh. um, they'll work on a project from start to finish, so it could be a special military project or it could just be a core cool range model, but they'll work on a kit of between 5 and 20, whatever it is. The model that Luke's working on at the moment is the Royal Tama Black. Uh, so this is one of our core cool range watches. Um, it's a seven hand uh, chronograph movement with a GMT function. So they'll turn a solid bar steer into effectively that. It goes through, again, numerous um, processes to, to get the right grain in there, get the right polished areas, polish. Um, that case then, once that's done and QC and cleared as is, is good, it goes off to get hardened, mm -hmm. where we get a hardening coat. And okay, on it, right. Um, which reduces scratches. Sure. This piece of equipment here is yep. uh, it's a, a chronoscope, um, measures 10 movements at a time, and okay. then we log these movements in here by their movement numbers so we know exactly how that watch performs. It's that. really like a science lab, this Yeah, it's really yeah, it is. Sometimes it is yeah. Yeah. Now, at the end of each of these um, measuring devices, there's a very small microphone, and that's basically listening to, to the watch ticking. It's performing all that's sorts bonkers. of calculations <laughs> from that, um, and then it's working out some figures for us. Right. So it will tell us how many seconds it's gaining per day in that position. Um, based on how it sounds? Just based on how it sounds. So it's counting, it's counting Different how many times it's ticking, it's right. counting how far the balance is, is moving. Um, yeah, it does some crazy maths and, and, and gives us some figures where we can just go, okay, that watch there is gaining 1.7 seconds per day in that position. I'll just show you the case back. Okay. So this ring here where it says G Boab. Uh -huh. 
that's oh, wow. the part of the plane. So that's what it's all about. I mean, as, uh, as small as it looks, that is a piece of aluminium component from the Concorde that has flown at some point at supersonic speed. What's been great, my journey with Bremont, I've been to the launch of this watch and we also were at the Bremont store last night mm -hmm. uh, listening to the Concorde pilot yeah, talk yeah. us through his story. It blows my mind. Yeah. It's just unreal. Mm. It was uh, London to New York in just over three hours. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. So to have that piece of history in the back of your watch is, is truly, truly special. Yeah, it's pretty. It's very, very, it's very smart, very smart. Um, and then you've got this cool thing, which is probably the main attraction. So the nose, as you would land in a Concorde, the nose come down. And then what that does, that opens up space for your watch. Who, who is... dreamt up, like, I mean, at some point, <laughs> you, you guys sat around a table and were like, we need to do the yeah. packaging on this just this. Which Pretty genius crazy. said, I know what we'll do. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have an articulating yeah. nose cone section, yeah, <laughs> which ejects the watch out of the back. <laughs> I, I was just it's like, so, It's so good. So I was just informed that the leather on the watch is the same type of leather that was on the pilot's yeah, seat. It is. So it's very, it's very tough. It's very durable, and it feels. But it looks gorgeous as well. Yeah, it is. I mean, you really wouldn't mind that in <laughs> your car, actually. Yeah, something like that. Stunning, isn't it? The silhouette of Concorde in the exposed movement on the rear of the watch, and I think it's this uh, story that runs throughout that really makes this thing special. And the fact, of course, that it has a literal piece of Concorde yeah. in the back of it. That <laughs> okay. too. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, fun fact, they're only making 300 of the stainless steel of these watches. Now, this is number 251. So if anyone watching this <laughs> ends up with number 251, you'll know that I packaged your watch for you. You lucky so-and-so. <laughs> there we have it. Absolutely stunning. Pack it nice little tissue paper for you, sir. Then, final lid. Oh, that's so satisfying. Not as satisfying as opening it, of course, but it feels so, oh, it's so steady. Amazing. No, we started um, as a company in 2002. And you'd never guess for these bags, but 2002, and then our first watch sort of released and bought by the public in 2007. So it took, took five years to get to there, but 11 years since our first watch sale. 11 years ago. Yeah. I mean, honestly, walking around here with all that, I mean, all of the additions you've done. My favorite story and watch so far from you guys is the Wright Flyer. That blows yeah, my it's, mind. It's quite special. Blows my special. mind. But Concorde now, <clears throat> you've got the collab with Jaguar. If, I, if someone hadn't have told me today that you were as young as you are, I wouldn't have thought it. It really feels like you've been established for a long time. The passion runs deep in terms of bringing watchmaking back to this country. <laughs> so if you go back 100 years, okay. probably 60 plus percent of the world's sort of watch production came from British shores. You know, first ships chronometer in the 1700s, John Harrison, the Yorkshireman, you know, the world sets its time by Greenwich. And also 56% of the innovation, any mechanical watch came from this country as well. So there's, there is this amazing history. And then we had these two world wars. Yes. So if you could build, you know, a movement of a mechanical watch, you could machine a firing pin for an a rifle or whatever it is. Yeah. And so it's all about the war effort. So we gradually, and then with the Second World War, we we're on our knees, it's all about survival. Yeah. Rolex started in Clerkenwell in 1905 by a German. Yeah, yeah. So, so there is this history. Incredible so what history, we're though. passionate about, and I hope you talk to anyone here at Bremel, yeah. is about bringing watchmaking back. So it's not only assembling and training up watch technicians yeah. and watchmakers, it's about machining the parts as well. So the other facility we've got is you're literally see a bar metal going in yeah. and parts coming We need out. to go there the next time. I'd love to show you, I'd love because that's really exciting, yeah, it's really yeah. exciting. There's a strong aviation theme that runs through Bremont. Where, yes. where did that come from? Pretty much our father. So okay. he was an aeronautical engineer uh -huh. at Cambridge. Our background was growing up in the workshop with him, Very making cool. restoring lots of old yeah. airplanes, bikes, cars, and watches and clocks are a passion. Uh -huh. But also he's a display pilot. So uh -huh. my brother, yeah. myself, and my father are all sponsored through University of the Air Force. Cool. Um, and then we ended okay. up literally doing these air shows with our father and we're about this side. And then and we're a bit older ourselves, we started doing them ourselves. So flying old aircraft is yeah. very much in the blood and we still do a lot. So do you still fly? Uh, yeah, loads, loads. Ah, so wow. that's, that's uh, one of the Bremont buses there. We fly that thing <laughs> a lot uh, amongst other really? things. So, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so, that's another Dude, I'm going to have to join you on that. Well, next, next one, one that'd be fantastic. we'll fly and then we'll yeah. go and see the other facility. How's that? Oh, that sounds so. like a chore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a deal. Let's do it. Deal, 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 deal. Deal. So, next video with Bremont, we're flying to the place where the cases get made. 
cases and movement parts and other bits and bobs we're doing now. Well, look, you're a busy man. We'll catch up in the plane next time. Deal. And we'll see James, you soon. Thanks for your time here. Uh, lovely to meet. These guys have enjoyed it. Uh, it'll be interesting, the uh, feedback. But thanks very much. Pleasure. Cheers. Absolute pleasure. I just want to say a massive thank you to Bremont. Uh, this wasn't a sponsored post or anything like that. I just love watches and I love sharing watches with you guys. Uh, and the notion of celebrating Concord and putting a piece of Concord within their new watch just fascinated me and hopefully it fascinated you guys too. So if you want to see more watch content, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you enjoy it as much as I do, then we'd be happy to bring it along to you. That's uh, somewhat of a new format to the channel, even though I've shared some watch stuff in the past, uh, we're still kind of finding our grounds in terms of the best way of sharing it with you. And on that note, we're going to call it a day just before the sun sets on wonderful Henley. As always guys, thanks for watching and I shall see you next time. Ciao.